Hello and welcome to Staff TV's coverage of the Staffordshire University Student Union Leadership Race 2013. Today is results day for the election for the full-time officers and in about 10 minutes we will be finding out the students who have won. The full-time officers use a year to lead the Students' Union as their full-time job. They become a trustee of the Students' Union and are responsible in law for the operation of the union, with oversight of the union's operations and membership. If you guys want your tweets to be read out tonight, then use the hashtag LeadStat, or you can message us on Facebook. For students' union elections, NUS recommends using the Alternative Transferable Voting System. It is the most fair and effective way of electing a candidate. Suppose we wanted to elect one of these candidates to a single position. In some elections, you can only vote for one candidate. With transferable voting, you get the choice of saying, if my favourite candidate doesn't win, I would like this candidate to win. And if they don't win, I would like this candidate to win, and so on. If you don't like any of these candidates, you can vote for reopen nominations. This is called voting in order of preference. How is this election counted? First of all, we count all the valid votes in the election. We then work out the quota. The quota is the number of valid votes divided by the number of positions available plus one. For example, if you have one position and 400 valid votes, the quota is 400 divided by 1 plus 1, and therefore the quota is 200. We then count all the number one votes for each candidate. If the candidate with the highest number of votes achieves or surpasses the quota, they win. However, if no candidate passes the quota, the candidate with the lowest number of votes is eliminated. If the eliminated candidate was your first choice, your second choice is then counted. We then add this number to the votes in the first round. If a candidate has still not passed the quota, we then eliminate the next candidate with the lowest amount of votes. If the eliminated candidate was your first choice, your second choice is then counted. If they were your second choice, your third choice is counted. We then add these numbers to the votes from the second round. This continues until someone passes the quota. Once a candidate passes the quota, they are elected. And that's alternative transferable voting. We're going to have a look, though, at the tweets that we have received at the moment, then. So we have got Jen Palmer saying, good luck to Stan Tall staff, especially Matt Lowe, who is my awesome brother. The uh, Staffordshire University Students Union, they have also tweeted as well, saying, um, well, has anyone got any predictions on it? The, um, who's going to win? Remember, we would love to hear from you as well. Just remember to use the hashtag lead staffs. We've got other tweets coming in from Adam. He said, good luck to Alex Bilham. And then we've also got uh, some of the candidates... Um, a bit nervous saying why don't we know yet it's obviously building up a bit too much for them as well but remember to get your tweets on the show tonight just use the hashtag lead staffs we have a lot of candidates working hard on their campaigns as we've seen and we will be having a look at that in a couple of minutes time but we are going to look at the leadership race question time that took place two weeks ago Hello and welcome to Staff TV's coverage of the Staffordshire University Student Union's Leadership Race for 2013. A lot of students have been nominated but there are only five places available so the competition is hot. My name is Christopher Wimpany. And my name is Mel Ramsey. I'm Holly Hatton Baldwin. Hi, my name is Ken Sang. Who is Matthew Lowe? Hi, my name is Adam Ledley. I'm Hi, I'm Lewis Lowe. My name is Rochelle Abusi Wan Tweet. Hi, my name is Kimberly and I'm running to be one of your full time officers this year. I'm here to represent you. But to be one of your full time officers in 2013. Potential full-time officer. Your student officer, 2013. I'm running for so many different reasons. To carry on building and collaborating with the university to make sure that your student experience here is as fantastic as it possibly can be. Being able to take it further and having more input to pressure the university. Oh, I want to improve the communication between the union. I want to make student life more fun in general. To help students, really. Uh, why do you want to stand? If you could change one thing about being a student at Stafford University, what would it be 
And the third is, what can you offer that no one else can? Okay, so I want to stand to represent Staffordshire University Student Union and the students themselves. I just want to put something back into university that's helped me so much and helped me feel proud of who I've become. As a union, we should actively seek to promote employment opportunities, provide graduate skills, and make sure our graduates are the most desirable graduates across the country. I want to work to continue my work representing your views and your voice. We do not listen to the, to the students properly at this moment in time. I actually want to come out and about, whether it's sitting in the student spaces, in the bars, in the shops, in the areas and listen to what you want and get these things resolved. Now we're going back over to Stoke to hear a few words from the current Student Union President, Gary Richardson. Hello, um, welcome and apologies for the slight delay here. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, first of all, I'd just like to go and like, give a bit of a quick speech um, to thank everyone for their efforts that they've put in over the last um, two, three, four weeks. Um, if only candidates running in the local and general elections became superheroes, had posters featuring Bo Selector, dressed up in um, human-sized whoopee cushions, and produced a video that mixed the Harlem Shake, Gangnam Style and the Birdie Song, then maybe Nick, Dave and Ed would see a massive increase in the voter turnout nationally. This is the uniqueness of a student union leadership race. Harnessing the creativity and skills of aspiring students who want to represent their peers and improve others' experiences by becoming the leaders of this fantastic organisation. This fantastic organisation has, over the last 18 months, worked to ensuring that our book sports clubs are competing in identical sports kits. We have improved the student spaces in Stafford and in Stoke and are currently working with the university to improve the spaces at Blackheath Lane and Shrewsbury. We have employed more students, more, made more services available. Students are creating more societies and taking out more volunteering opportunities. And we are constantly increasing the methods that you can feed back to the Students Union about the issues that you have during your time here at the university. This is why the Students Union is an integral part of the student experience at university. And this is why it is important that we engage with you and encourage you to vote so your students union continues to be student led and has a focus of delivering for you. Planning this election started back last April after we recorded a voter turnout of 878 students, which was less than 5% of the membership. We engaged with students to find out why this was so low and listen to what you said. We increased the amount of polling stations. Um, we increased the amount of promotions that we put into elections. We, um, we shortened the voting period from 168 hours to 60. And for the first time, we allowed the membership to compare manifestos with nine sat questions for the candidates to answer. When it was revealed that 34 candidates had stu stood for election back at the beginning of this month, I knew that the measures that we have made to increase in awareness of our leadership race would be a success and tripling our voter turnout was a possibility. And for the first time in a while, we have got students in their first and second years wanting to make a difference. Unfortunately, by the time voting had opened, we no longer had 34 candidates as seven withdrew from the leadership race and a further candidate withdrawing during the voting period. But since starting campaigning eight days ago, Candidates have been engaging and encouraging students to use their voice and vote. And students have listened. Last night at 9.30 p.m., we hit 2,000 votes. And by the time polls closed, we had achieved 2,025 votes, meaning that we had a vote turnout of 14%, the best since 2002-2003, which is a fantastic achievement from all the candidates, students involved in helping campaigning, and the students' union staff, and I'd like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. We will shortly move on to the count, but before I, um, beforehand, I'd like to thank all the candidates for the hard work um, since nominations opened. Not everyone will get, get elected today, and I wish you all could, because you all offered something different, but it was clear from your manifestos that you wanted to represent students and add to the student experience here at Staffordshire University. Good luck to all the candidates, and I would like to pass back to Stafford and Staffs TV.
Hello there and welcome back to Staffs TV. We're going to have a little look then because social media is currently going mad at the moment then. So um, we've got a 14% of the student population at Staffordshire University. They have voted in the elections. That's from Beth Morley, current vice president of the Students' Union. Only for a couple of minutes more though. It's kind of oh, it's getting me all... I can't, I can't even think of the word. That's how excited I am. Uh, Kate has also tweeted in. She said she's mad for all the SU elections. Hashtag lead staffs as well. I'm actually quite surprised because I thought elections would be really quiet on this um, university, but everyone just seems to be really enthusiastic. And it's kind of quite nice as well. Keep a look at some of the tweets. So team staffs has said it's starting. It was always an exciting thing. And well, so we also got some other people as well asking, has anyone got any predictions of who is going to be winning the elections as well? Remember, if you can also get your tweets in as well, just use the hashtag leadstaffs on Twitter or you can message us on Facebook. We're going to keep looking through some of the tweets, though. Um, uh, more of the candidates are just getting quite anxious now and they're getting a bit nervous and they're just saying, oh, we want to know now. Obviously, the suspense is getting to them quite a little bit. And we've also got one of the uh, tweets coming in saying from Lindsay, um, let's hear some support for the Stafford-based candidates because apparently they are the best as well. Uh, we've got Scott. He's tweeted in. Good luck to Chris, but well done to whoever gets it. You all deserve it. It'd be absolutely lovely to get your opinions in on this as well. We would absolutely love to hear from you. It was very nice so looking at the elections because I'm a first year student. It was absolutely amazing just to see the energy and the enthusiasm that they have here um, during the elections. Like I could easily approach some of them. Right then, I've just heard that we're now going to be going back over to Stoke for the announcement. So back over to Stoke. Before we get underway with the count for the full time officer, we were also due to have an election for NUS delegate, student trustee and student councillor. However, these positions were uncontested. At this stage, I would like to announce those candidates who have been elected unopposed. For NUS delegate, there were six positions available, five candidates um, who were elected unopposed. Gary Richardson, Kimberly Kirkham, Stacey Heath, Muhammad Shahig Hijaz and Amin Khan. Congratulations. For student trustee, there were four positions available. Three candidates were elected unopposed. They were Alex Kirk, Man Asa Kachala, and Muhammad Shahiki Jazz. Congratulations. <laughs> For student councillor, there were 12 positions available. Four candidates elected unopposed. They were Amin Khan, Ka Aka. Kisori Kandregula, um, Sarah Sokrat um, Sokrates, and Shanamu um, Shamuka Guram. Congratulations to all these candidates, and apologies if I've got your name wrong. There will be an announcement in due course regarding the available positions that have been left unfulfilled. I would like to move on um, to the election for the full-time officers before we start the count and. Stages, I would like to remind everyone about the processes for the elections. We have five positions available for full time officer, and we will do a count to determine who will be your five elected representatives. After that count has been complete, we will then head back to Staffs TV before announcing who will be offered the position of president. That candidate does not have to accept that position straight away, and we will encourage that that candidate. Cons um, considers their options before making a decision with their new team. I hope everyone's clear with this process. I'd like to move on to the count. Yeah. Okay, good luck everyone. Okay, at the first stage, um, to count all the valid votes, there were 2,020 votes cast, of which 19 people abstained i.e. indicated they had no preference. This means that there are 2,006 active votes at the first stage. As there are five positions available, the quota is 2,006 divided by six, which is the four positions plus one. This means that quota is just over 334 votes. At this stage, no one has achieved the quota. 
So we'll move on to stage two. We, um, and exclude the candidate with the lowest first preferences. Their votes are then transferred to the second preferences expressed. Therefore, Adam Ledley has been excluded and six of voters um, of um, Adam's first preference had put no further preference. These therefore become non-transferable. This therefore reduces the active votes by six, leaving 2,000 valid votes. The quota is now recalculated. Once again, divided the active votes by six um, with six view of votes. This is nice and easy as the quota is reduced by one. At this stage, no one has met new quota. Is everyone understanding the process? We will now move through the next stages, excluding the candidate with the lowest first preference, transferring their papers, calculated, calculating the active vote and adjusting the quota. There will be quite a few of these stages before anyone gets close to quota, at which start, stage it will start to slow down again. We now exclude the next candidate with the fewest first preferences, which is Rachel Turney. Uh, and after, second choice, um, after the next valid choice, Again, six papers have no further preferences and again, active votes reduced by six and the quota reduces again by one. At stage four, Amanda is excluded, votes transferred to the next preference and quota recalculated. At stage five, Johnston is excluded, votes transferred to the next preference and quota recalculated. At stage seven, Mark is excluded, votes transferred to next preference and quota recalculated. At stage eight is Maddie Andrews excluded, votes transferred to next preference. Um, transferred to next preference and quota recalculated. At stage nine, Matthew Lowe um, is excluded, Votes transferred to next preference and quota recalculated. Cool, excellent, thank you. At stage 10, Lisa Gallus is excluded. Votes transferred to next preference and quota recalculated. Stage 11, John Ratcliffe is excluded. Votes transferred to next preference and quota is recalculated. Stage 12, Kimberly Kirkham is excluded, votes transferred to next preference and quota is reallocated. Stage 13, Jade Harrison is excluded, votes transferred to next preference and quota is recalculated. Stage 14, Holly Hatton Baldwin is excluded, votes transferred to next preference and quota recalculated. At stage 15, Ben Lovell is excluded, votes transferred to next preference and quota is recalculated. Stage 16, Rebecca Unsworth is excluded. Votes transferred to next preference and quota recalculated. At stage 17, Ken Sang is excluded and his votes transfer and the quota is reduced to 292.5. With the transfers, this takes Christopher Wimpenny over quota and is therefore declared elected. Congratulations to Christopher Wimpenny. Stage 18, because Chris has a surplus vote, this surplus is transferred to the next valid choices on the papers from his last transferred batch. In transferring this surplus, 70% of Chris voters had no other preference or their other preference had already been eliminated. This means that the equivalent of three votes go to his sec next valid preference. This reduces the valid vote remaining to 1,455. Therefore, quota required requ um, reduces to the amount of valid votes of 1,455 divided by the number of positions now available plus one, which means the required qu quota is 291. At this stage, with the reduced quota, I can confirm that Rochelle Uwusu Antwi has 291 votes and therefore is re elected. Congratulations, Rochelle. 
Because Rochelle's votes match quota, there is no votes to be transferred at this stage. At stage 19, Alex Billum has the lowest number of votes and is therefore excluded. Votes are then transferred to the next preference and quota is recalculated. At stage 20, Lewis Lay is excluded and therefore votes are transferred to the next preference and quota is recalculated. At stage 21, Lawrence Parks is excluded and therefore his votes are transferred to the next preference and quota is recalculated. With 261 votes, Mel Ramsey has achieved quota and therefore is elected. <laughs> Congratulations to Mel. Because um, she has reached quota and has no um, surplus votes to transfer, um, again, there's no surplus to transfer. Pardon? Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, so, so um, she does have a surplus transfer and therefore they get reallocated to the next valid preference. Okay, however, with um, three places filled, there are now only two positions available and an active vote of 672 student um, votes divided by three. Quota is now 224, with which no further candidate has reached. At stage 22, Glyn Chadwick is excluded. Quota is now reduced and um, votes are transferred. At stage 23, on redistribution of Glyn's votes, I can confirm that Alice Wilcox is elected because she was over quota. <laughs> Congratulations to Alice. We now have to transfer her surplus. At stage 23, I mean 24, on transferring the surplus, I can now confirm that Deo Obubanjo has been elected. Congratulations to Deo. I am now proud to announce that the officer team for 2013-2014 are Chris Wimpenny, Rochelle wusu Antwi, Mel Ramsey, Alice Wilcox and Dei Obu Bonjo. Congratulations all. I'd like, now to, I'd like to now hand back over to Staffs TV before we reveal who will be offered presidency. Congratulations to the selected officers. Just to recap then, Chris Winpenny, Rochelle, who is the current vice president, Mel Ramsey, Alice Wilcox and Dave Deo, they have all been elected to the Staffordshire University Student Union uh, president and vice president role. I'm sure you guys will do a brilliant job. Uh, we're gonna, about to go back to Stoke for the second count, but first I have a few comments here that I'm going to share with you just as a minute when I load up Twitter. If, Always technical issues with this, and I can't find Twitter. There, there it is. I got it in the end. I, I do, I do apologise for that. Right then, looking back at the tweets, uh, Beth Morley. She said she's so nervous, and she's not even running. Um, there we go. We've got some people saying Whoop absolutely landed with the count and with the results. Um, we've also got a Speedboat on Twitter, tweeting, uh, tweeting saying Go Stafford candidates. And also got a few more can well got a few more tweets in as well. But remember, you can get your tweets in as well. You just remember to use the hashtag lead staffs. Gonna look at the VT now of the Mythbusters. So hope you enjoy. As you know, this is the last week to nominate yourself to take part in the leadership race, and I'm here to dispel some of the myths surrounding nomination. It's just a popularity contest, and anyway, I won't win without a big campaign team. Knowing lots of people or having a big campaign team doesn't necessarily guarantee you success in the elections. There are a lot of things that you can do to help convince people to vote for you, including going out and talking to them, speaking in lectures, handing out flyers, putting up posters, using email and Facebook, and plenty more. What's the point? You'll never change anything. Students have been responsible for some of the biggest changes at staffs, including the introduction of 24-hour libraries. Many of these changes have been led by elected students. I'm not political enough. You don't have to be passionate about political issues to get nominated as a student officer. 
All you need is the drive to make things better for your fellow students here at Staffs. I'm not sure it's for me. I'm happy with things at Staffs. Just because you're happy with Staffs doesn't mean that you'll make a bad officer. Sometimes even small changes can make a big difference. And union officers are there to give feedback on behalf of students and the staff. I don't have the right experience to nominate myself. You don't need prior experience to nominate yourself as an officer, and there's no guarantee that any type of experience will get you voted in. All you need is good suggestions and enthusiasm. It's too complicated. Nominating yourself is easy. All you need to do is go to staffsunion.com forward slash leadership race and fill in the online nomination form with a few details about yourself. You'll be able to upload a photo and your manifesto to the website. If you have any more questions about nomination, feel free to pick up one of these election myth busted leaflets dotted around the Student Union or visit the Leadership Race website. So there we go then, that was the Mythbusters. A very useful video as well, especially now, even though it's a year away, in case you want to decide that you want to run as president or vice president for next year, then that can give you some ideas. That video is also available on our website, staffstv.co.uk. Looking back then, more people are tweeting in. Uh, Amelia, she's tweeting saying, well done, Chris, and a lot of exclamation marks. Uh, Jack Tatton, he's very happy for Rochelle and also used hashtag lead staffs. Remember, you can get your messages on the show tonight just use hashtag lead staffs and then you can get your message read out on air coming back then to elections as well it was very nice just to see like how proud everyone is of it you know i'm i'm from a little town in wales and well we don't have this kind of stuff because we've got no university we've only got college and the elections were on a far lower scale than that but i was relatively quite impressed i've got some of the useful uh, statistics in front of me at the moment um, the electoral roll, um, as of this year, is 14,440 students. Within the first 24 hours, over 1,457 of you voted. The majority came from the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Sciences. There was, there was approximately 41 votes per hour, and the majority did come from the Stoke campus, but 39% of the votes did come from Stafford, so that is quite interesting. Apparently students from 35 different countries have voted in the leadership race this year. The majority were male with a leading 58% voters with female being close behind with 42. And this was on Tuesday as well. So obviously this isn't the correct information. I think it was about 2,056 votes in total, which was quite good because I remember I think it was last year we only had about 800 votes. So it's quite a vast improvement really. Right then, um, there was a lot of things changed as well from what I've heard. Obviously, I'm a first student, so I wasn't involved with the elections last year. But um, I know that they introduced something new voting-wise. They introduced um, the iPad voting stations, which was set up around the campus instead of going to the union shops. That was quite an interesting idea, because obviously, with Wi-Fi, it allowed you to go anywhere and vote. Same with the union shops as well. They had the voting polls there. You just pretty much swiped your card and pressed, well, in first preference, who you wanted to win. Uh, coming from Stoke, because unfortunately I didn't come up to Stafford to, um, when people were campaigning, it was nice because um, all the people who were running had um, a green top on with the leadership race on and they said on the back, I'm running in the race, come ask me questions, pretty much. Which is quite nice because obviously if they were to be elected in, then you can have to be, they have to be easily approachable. So having that on your back in a way, it was quite handy. So you could literally just go up to them and talk to them and ask them, oh, so what things do you want to campaign about? The t-shirts did, I've identified them as well, so obviously you knew who was running. But um, the candidates as well also decided to go out on union nights out as well. So if you were, I don't know, in LRV or if you were in Legends, then you could easily just approach them in very loud music and you could just ask them, well, questions like, what are you going to do? If you are elected, what are you going to do for me and help me to improve the student experience? Which also brings me back to another point as well, is that some students have still put their manifestos online. I know the majority of candidates who were running have got Facebook and social media uh, pages where you can read their manifesto. And it was interesting just to see what they want to do. Another thing which the union introduced this year is that every single candidate did get filmed and it kind of made us try and think about why we should vote and why in particular we should vote for them. Um, we've also, it's just interesting as well because all these videos are still online and it's interesting because we get to know the candidate a bit more in a way and obviously then we can kind of have an idea. Um, they also came on our show we hosted two weeks back as well, the leadership race. Uh, lead, uh, 
apologise. The leadership race show where they came and basically we asked them questions on why they think they would be the best candidate out of all of them. That was a selection of candidates we came, but um, it was interesting to see that. And obviously we would like the tradition to keep going in the next couple of years time. Right then, we're going to go back to Stoke now for the second count. Congratulations to all the win winning candidates and commiserations to those that didn't get elected. What we're going to do now is run through the voting system again to determine who will be offered president, um, the president position. Um, what we'll end up doing, um, if you can just focus on the um, candidates um, at the very top um, over that area, and that will determine who would be offered that position um, of president. So first thing we do, we um, exclude the um, lowest candidate and then transfer his papers across oh. and we'll just keep on doing that until we find out who will be given the position of presidency. So as you see, we um, just keep on getting rid of the lowest placed candidate and we'll just keep distributing their papers amongst the other candidates remaining. And if you can see, when we get to the top of the screen again, that the um, numbers of the vote count keep on going up for the candidates towards the top. Currently have 14 candidates left to get through. And as you can see, overall, Christopher Winpenny has 274 current votes. Rochelle Wusawantwi, 253. Oh, that's just changed. <laughs> but we'll just keep on um, eliminating until we get down to the final two candidates. I think you can feel the tension, can't you? As you can see, with um, 10 candidates remaining, um, we have Christopher Wimpenny at 303, Rochelle Wusawantwi at 291, and Mel Ramsey at 234.
Hopefully this will all run smoothly. Huh? As you can see, there's one vote in it at the So like seven stages left. There's one vote in it between Rochelle and Christopher. Three hundred and thirty five votes each with only four candidates remaining. <laughs> so we've only got Deo, Alice, Mel, Rochelle and Christopher to get through. And at this stage, we're eliminating those that have actually been elected to see where their votes go to. Oh. And as you can see, due to the elimination of Deo, Rochelle has um, received 420 votes compared to Chris is three, five, seven. Oh, we can go back. No, we've just got Mel up to go. <laughs> We're just eliminating the that's one. <laughs> At this stage. Congratulations to Rochelle Owusu Antwi. As I said at the start of this process, Rochelle is now offered presidency for 2013-2012, 2013-2014. Um, so congratulations. So, oh, I'd like to throw it back to Staffs TV. That was, oh, that was really intense. I'm just watching it in the studio when it was between Chris and Rochelle. But as you've just seen, Rochelle has been nominated for president for the next year. It was just literally, I was watching the TV in here between Chris and Rochelle and, oh, it was absolutely amazing. But congratulations to everyone who has been elected. Hopefully that... Um, it's going to be a really good year for them all, really. L the Twitter has gone practically off the wall at the moment. Um, we've had a tweet coming in saying, well done, Chris, you've made Stafford Campus proud. Uh, we've also had another tweet saying, go, Chris, grow. And never grow. Go, Chris, go. I apologise. And also another one coming in saying, well done to all the winners, especially Chris, representing the Stafford Campus. Remember, you still have time to get your tweets in. Just use the hashtag lead staffs and, well, you can get your message on air. Right then, um, we're going to, oh well, just congratulate all the winners again, really. Um, let me just load all the winners up because I can't remember all their names. And I've absolutely forgotten their names. Right then, so a massive congratulations to Chris Winpenny. We've got Rochelle, who's going to be our president for next year. We've also got Mel Ramsey. We've got Alice Wilcox. And we've also got Deo as well. Going to, well, it's going to be an absolutely interesting one as well because another tweet has come in saying it's going to be interesting that not, not a slate is going to, well, a slate isn't going to be dominating this year which is going to be interesting as well so they will take up their position now come in july when they have the transition period with the current um 
presence and price presence, and then they will come into power in the new academic year, which will be September 2013, where I'll be a second year, and then I'll be halfway through university life. So we have our new winners and the new presidents and the vice presidents. Well done to all of you. The students who won today have won a seat on the union that could change the futures of the student body for the better. These students were chosen by you for issues that you felt were strong at your university. Now we're going to go back to Stoke where Gary Richardson will deliver a speech and welcome the new... No, apologies for that. I've just found out that we are not ready at Stoke, so we will be going to that in a couple of minutes' time. This... There we go. If you have a look behind me, we actually have the poster. This was actually all of the candidates that were running in the leadership race as of this year. Got quite a few. I was quite surprised because I thought when I ran in my student union elections back in my old college last year that there'd be quite a few, really. There was only, I think there was five of us who were running in the elections back then. But to see a large amount of people running to be a full-time sabbatical is absolutely amazing. We've got the faces, if you will, you don't recognize them. Then we've got Deo, this is Deo. We've got Rochelle, who's gonna be the president. We've got Mel Ramsey, um, just looking for the others. We've got Alice Wilcox, she's right at the bottom of there. And then we also have, if I can find him, there he is, Chris Winpenny next to Maddie Andrews for there. So they will be your full-time officers as of next year. Obviously, they will be splitting their time between all campuses which are between Stoke and Stafford. So it's going to be rather interesting because um, I've read their manifestos and it's going to be some interesting um, things that they are going to be tackling. Like I know accommodation was one of them and some of the um, facilities which are currently, um, we're having issues here um, at the university. So they will be tackling that and also further issues as well. So it's going to be rather interesting. But obviously as well, you can talk to these officers because they will be approachable and you'll be able to talk to them pretty much on a drop-in basis. Obviously they will be based at the student spaces at both the Stoke and the Stafford campus and I'm assuming they'll all have email addresses and they'll also be on social media as well, which is what the current presidents and vice presidents are on now. You can tweet them and then they can say, oh, yeah, there we go. You, they also have suggestion notes as well. I know in the student union venues, they've got the boxes and they've got the little feedback forms as well, which you can write your own feedback on, or some I even ideas that you have that you want to change the union. I know that um, in Stoke, for example, they are based at um, Verve and they're based at Ember Lounge, and they're also based at both union shops as well. I'm in, in Stafford, I'm assuming that these are based also in Legends, in Lounge, and in the student union shop as well. But, I would like to know, though, are you happy with the result? Let me know. Use the hashtag LeadStaffs to get your tweet mentioned on the show this evening. But just to recap again, massive congratulations does go to Chris Winpenny, Rochelle, Mel, Alice, and Deo as well. Right then, I've just been told that we're now ready, so we're now going to go as if by magic back to Stoke, where Gary Richardson will deliver a speech and welcome the new officers. Before we hear from the winning candidates, there are a few people that I should say thank you to for helping us reach the 2025 milestone. They are Mike, Pip, Rebecca and Alex in our marketing department, Isham and Kerry in our engagement team, Jonathan, Tommy, Michelle and Lindsay in our student activities team, all of our venue staff, Chris, Steve, Steve, Mel, Lisa, Stu, Monique and Beth, and of course, Ken, Margaret, Lisa and Hans. I have probably missed some people, but without these staff working really hard in planning the elections in the last few days, weeks and months, we wouldn't have achieved this fantastic feat. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the candidates over the last month for the excellent work that you've put in to making this a fantastic experience and for the students that have really engaged and voted for us. Now I'd like to ask your full-time executive officer team and representatives for 2013-2014 to come to the podium and say a few words. Um, come up, you guys, Chris, first. Thank you. I'm going to keep this very, very short and brief, mainly because everyone else is going to want to say something else. Thank you very much once again to every candidate that's running. Basically, you've pushed us all the most we can do, and that's how we've got the most votes. You are all fantastic people. And I, as Gary said, I do wish everyone else could have run as well because, and got in, because it'd been fantastic for you all to be, from the madness from some of you to the sensefulness of some of us. Also, more importantly, thank you to you, the students who have actually voted in these elections. Thank you for voting me in, and hopefully this year it'll be quite a fun year and we'll get some sorted for you. And I'm going to pass over to whoever's going to go next. But thank you very much. Uh, 
Um, I just want to say, like, thank you to everyone who voted for me. I went into this not thinking I was going to get it at all, to be honest. I want to say thank you to Lewis and Kim, who ran as part of my slate and encouraged me to do it. And thank you to everyone else who has supported me. I can't, I honestly can't say thank you enough. I'm so happy, like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, I just want to say thank you to everyone and pushing this forward, my street team, everyone that supported me and helped me, even the candidates as well. I just wish everyone the best of luck in everything that they're doing and I'm just proud to be staffs. That's it. Thanks. Um, hi, I, uh, I really didn't think... Uh, um, I'm just really um, wish that I could have got in with my sleep, but uh, congratulations to everyone and everyone did really, really well. And yeah, thank you very much. Oh gosh, um, I just want to take the moment. I mean, everyone in the room now has seen that I've been a complete um, wreck. I just want to take this moment to say it and massive 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 thank you to everybody who's not only supported and helped me as a candidate but also gone out and voted i mean your vote has made such a difference to you know this year and groundbreaking figures that have come to staff so i just want to say a massive thank you for getting involved thank you for supporting um, me uh, thank you for just getting engaged and to the fantastic candidates that put themselves forward. I've met some amazing people that I think could do a fantastic job obviously i've been in the post for seven months and some of you are just next to none fantastic but I see my new team standing in front of me and, you know, my old team as well. That's trying to run around Auckland, I can see her, but, you know, <laughs> done a fantastic job. But I have every confidence just from speaking to you guys that you were going to do a worthy job. Um, and I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much for voting for me and voting point blank period in the elections. And I can't wait to get stuck in and be your president. Thank you very much. So that's it for the leadership race of 2013. A massive congratulations then goes to Chris Winpenny, to Rochelle, who's going to be our new president, to Mel Ramsey, Alice Wilcox, and to Deo as well. Thank you to everybody that took part in the smooth running of the coverage, who organised the race, including those who voted. And of course, the new officers wouldn't be where, uh, where they are if it wasn't for the effort that went into the student body voting. So thank you to all that voted. I've been Alex Burnett. Have a lovely evening and see you soon.